All right, so here we are with another unboxing video. Um, on Tuesday, on the launch of the Xbox Series X, we did a bad unboxing of the Xbox Series X. Just kind of had an overall look of the console, everything that came in the box, how it was packaged together. Um, going to be doing the same thing for the PlayStation 5, which I just picked up today. This is not going to be a comparison video. Um, I am not going to be doing any screen capture to compare the PS5 to the Xbox or anything like that. I do not have any of the, the stuff to do that. Um, this is literally just a, a really poorly done unboxing. That's the whole intent and purpose of this. So just wanted to put them, two, them both together so you can kind of see. Um, obviously PS5 box, much bigger. Very similar to the box that the PS4 came in, both the original PS4 um, and the PS4 Pro. Xbox Series X, I believe the packaging is similar, but it has definitely a little bit more of an upscale feel to the Xbox One packaging, um, as far as I can recall. So, yeah, I'm gonna take apart the PS5. We'll take a look, see what we got. I have a feeling that the presentation is not going to be the same as the Series X was. The Series X had a really nice kind of quality feel to the way that it had been packaged and put together. I think Sony's gonna be a little bit less like that. I think it's gonna be a little bit more basic cardboard, styrofoam, plastic wrap, that kind of stuff. But we'll we'll give, get her open and see what she looks like. Um, yeah, so here we go. Slide the Xbox out of the way and we will crack open this PS5. So got my trusty little kitchen knife. It's probably not the best way to do this, but that's okay. Um, Unfortunately, same issue that I had with my Xbox Series Xbox. Some damage on the corner of the box. Same thing on the corner here and on the bottom. This was unfortunately the best console that I was able to get. Um, EB Games, which is the same thing as GameStop in Canada. Um, that's where I picked up the console from. Unfortunately, this was the issue that they had, and there were not many other options. This was the best console in the store, so that's the one I grabbed. So that's that. It's unfortunate. I mean, I don't really care to be honest. Like, it's pro there's going to be so many PlayStation Fives that it's not really going to be. I don't think this box is going to be a huge collector thing. I will definitely keep the box in the future, but it is unfortunate. There's the damage on the bottom corner, the top right, the top left. Um, it is what it is. I'm not worried about the console itself being damaged, but the box physically is, and that kind of. Ruins a little bit of the collector status, but hey, it is what it is. So, piece of tape on top. Just gonna slip that open. Uh, just opens up. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Really basic cardboard. And there's a big box inside this kind of flimsier cardboard case. And yeah, as, as I've already said before, definitely not the same kind of presentation you're getting with the Series X. Series X almost feels like you're opening like a present or a gift. This is just like, here's your system, take it apart, go play with it. Um, let's take a look. Let's get this bad boy open and see what we got here. And still have yet to see PS5 in the flesh, understandably, as I'm not like a journalist, I would not have access to consoles early. Um, but yeah, we'll take this open and see what it looks like. So you can see, big box here with all the peripherals. This was sitting on top. I am assuming this would be like the controller, HDMI cord, power cord, all that kind of stuff. Yep, so here you are. PlayStation 5 quick start guide, safety guide, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, boring stuff. Certainly it's important, we'll go through it later. Um, okay, so over here, we have the bottom stand which I will, I kind of want to mount the PS5 on the bottom, on the stand, so be using this guy, kind of wrapped up in this packaging paper. Um, let's see what this guy looks like. Yeah, so we got the stand and the mount here. It looks like it just kind of clips into place. Looks pretty straightforward. You can see there's a clip on the back. There's a um, stand here, which I'm assuming somehow mounts into the PS5 console. And then, just flip it over the bottom. We got a couple of rubber pa grip pads here. It's all pretty straightforward stuff. Um, doesn't necessarily have the best feel to it, but I don't think it'll be noticeable when it's on the bottom of the console, anyways. So there's that. 
HDMI cord, which should be HDMI 2.1. So talking like, this is good for 4K, 8K, HDR, um, 60 hertz, 120 hertz. So like 60 FPS, 120 FPS. It's good for all that good stuff. So good on the console manufacturers for putting out the proper cords. Obviously they would, but it's just nice to make sure that it's there. You don't have to worry about that. Power cord. I mentioned this with the Series X, but it's really nice. There's no big power blocks that you have to run in the series to connect into the wall, which is good. Um, over here, what do we have? USB cord and USB-C. Awesome. So this is a good sign. The DualSense controller is a USB-C controller, which is fantastic. The older uh, micro USBs on the last generation consoles were not the best to say the least. Um, the connectors wear down, you replace cords all the time. The plugins on the controllers go bad. USB-C is way more straightforward. Um, I've yet to have any big failures on a USB-C cord. So that's fantastic. Okay, this is the big dog of the console for me, really, is the DualSense 5. Um, this is the new DualSense 5 controller here. I can already feel it has a nice weight to it. Um, for those of you who aren't in the know or just are less informed, DualSense 5 is a bit of a step up from the old PlayStation controller. Um, I'll grab one as reference for you. So this would have been the controller here. This here was the controller that came with the original PS4 console. DualShock 4. Um, it was pretty much just an iteration, reiteration of the DualShock 3. Obviously the biggest thing was that the light bar in the back to um, kind of flash and blink depending on say what was going on in the game. It could change colors if say like go red if your health was low. It was mostly just um, to interface with the PlayStation camera as a light so it could kind of track and follow it like the Play PlayStation Moves had. Um, it had a touch screen, or sorry, it had a touch pad um, on the front here that you could actually kind of move around. It worked like an actual touchpad. It was a button as well. There was a speaker on the controller. Um, and then it also had a audio port. So this was pretty similar for the most part to the DualShock 3, other than obviously the big inclusion of the touchpad, which fortunately did not get utilized very well on most PlayStation 4 games. The speaker on the controller did. It was kind of hit or miss depending on the game. Um, it was cool though that they put that in there. Certain games added a neat little effect to it. Um, it was a pretty, pretty cool idea, but a lot of the stuff on this controller didn't get utilized properly. Um, that's the DualShock 4. Going on to the DualSense, I've been really looking forward to this. Um, biggest thing with the DualSense is they've completely adjusted, or completely revamped the uh, vibrations. It's got full haptic feedback, or I don't know about full, but it's got very adaptive haptic feedback. Um, the triggers have vibration and rumble features and are resistant um, with haptic feedback. So what will actually happen is with the triggers, um, they can actually provide feedback depending on how far back you pull back the trigger. Say if you're like pulling a bow, it can actually simulate the resistance of a bowstring being drawn by the way that it vibrates and rumbles. Um, and apparently the way that the controller vibrates and rumbles in different spots it can simulate certain things like the feeling of the crashing of waves, um, smooth kind of slow rumbles of say something like a big vehicle driving past um, which is pretty cool I have no experience with that yet but I'm looking forward to trying that um, what I can see on here is looks like there's no light bar from what I understand I believe that the light bar is yeah it looks like they removed the light bar as far as I can recall I believe the light bar is actually in part with the touchpad now um, but I'm not 100% certain on that. That's I'm learning this out as I play it, as I fiddle with this myself. Um, overall, the weight is a lot nicer than the, the DualShock. Um, it's got a good bit of weight to it, and I'm assuming that's due to all the extra little motors and stuff they had to put in for the haptic feedback. Um, the shape is really nice. It feels very er ergonomic. Um, ergonomic, sorry, ergonomic. Um, the controller itself, it's got a nice texture to it. The front has a little bit of a matte finish. Um, I don't know how well that's going to hold up to grease and all that kind of stuff, but I mean, there's a reason why you can clean it. 
Um, the triggers are shaped a little bit differently, but still quite similar. Um, they've got a nice kind of solid kind of feel to them and, and weight. The buttons feel a little bit clickier than they did previously. I wouldn't say that it's like a keyboard, um, like a mechanical keyboard with that kind of click, but it's got a nice feel to it for sure. Um, the triggers, or sorry, the, the analog sticks, the the joy pad, or sorry, the, so the, yeah, the analog sticks or the joysticks, um, there's a nice texture. It's hard to see, but on the actual uh, rubber itself, it's nicely texturized. Um, and I believe that the actual surface area is a little bit bigger, gives you a little bit more room for control on the thumb. Um, the DualShock 4 did not have a good track record with this rubber wearing down. They wouldn't last very long before you'd actually start getting straight to the plastic. I'm hoping this is going to be more durable. Um, you can always buy those joystick covers, but I really don't like those things. They feel cheap. They don't feel like they're actually supposed to be on the controller in the first place. Overall, first impressions, though, with the controller, um, really nice. Like, it's got a lot of the same stuff that the DualShock 4 had. It's got the USB port on the bottom, or something the USB, the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So you can plug your headphones in. Um, looks like it has a mute button right there, which is pretty cool. I believe that there is actually a mic built into the controller now. So if, even if you don't have a headset, um, you can still talk to your friends in a party, which is pretty cool. It's neat that they did that. Um... Yeah, overall, it, it's definitely got more of a weight to it. It feels better to grip in the hand. It's got a nice, solid feel to it. The buttons feel a little bit more clicky, a little bit more solid. The real big thing will be testing out the haptic feedback, um, and I'll be looking forward to trying out a couple different games with that and seeing how that really feels. I'm really looking forward to the trigger resistance. Apparently, from what I've heard, the newest Call of Duty, Cold War, um, they've been working really hard with the DualSense controller, to actually give a different feel to each gun with the resistance that it provides and the vibration and the haptic feedback that you get from the recoil. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. I'm hoping that with games like with a bow, that it does a good job of actually simulating the pulling of a drawstring and the resistance that's provided. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited to try this guy out. I definitely know it's going to need to be charged up a little bit before I can do that and before I can actually get the console set up. But that is kind of a quick overview of the DualSense controller. Definitely looking forward to trying this guy out. Um, and I'll provide some more feedback on that after I actually get a chance. But overall initial impressions, it's got a nice weight to it. It feels more solid than the DualShock 4 did. Um, the texture on the back is nice. It's got kind of a nice kind of, almost more of a gritty texture around the back of the handles. Um, I'm looking forward to really trying this out. I was a little bit disappointed with the Series X and how the controller was essentially the same thing as the previous Xbox One controller other than the addition of the share button. Um, this is a bit of a big step up from the, the DualShock. So I look forward to trying this out and kind of getting that true next-gen experience, at least to me anyways. One of the biggest things about getting a next-gen console was always the feeling of trying out a brand new controller. Um, and I get to do that with this. So I'm looking forward to that. I'll provide some more updates on that later. For now kind of gone over all the peripherals and stuff that came with the console. I'm going to put the stuff off to the side and we are going to check out the big boy itself. The disc version PlayStation 5. So, as I had mentioned before, I was not expecting the same kind of presentation that Microsoft provided me if you had watched my previously bad unboxing video on the Xbox Series X. And again, I was not wrong. See that? Definitely doesn't look the same kind of way that the Xbox was nicely presented and kind of gift wrapped. It's just, here's some cardboard, here is some wrap, your console's in there. Pull it out and play with it. And that's kind of the point. And I get it. I understand. Um, I definitely like the visual flair that Sony, or sorry, that Microsoft has provided. But at the end of the day, the main, the, the main point of the console is to play video games on the console. It's not about how nice the box looks. Um, but from a collector's standpoint, it's definitely nice to have that little bit of extra kind of flair to it. It almost gives it like a higher, higher end upscale feeling like an Apple product, say like getting a new um, iPhone or Apple Watch or something like that. So that's pretty cool that Microsoft did that. Sony, it is what it is. 
Um, but again, this isn't really about the packaging, it's about the console. So we're gonna pull this bad boy out. It's definitely wedged in there in a funny way. I'm just gonna pull it straight out. You can see. Push this stuff off to the side. And that super plain old wrap can go over there. Perfect. Okay. So let's get this tape off and we can pull this bad boy out. This console, I can tell you right now, it is huge. It is much bigger than any of the other consoles that I own, and I practically, I have every modern console, and this is bigger than all of them. This is bigger than my Series X, this is bigger than my Xbox One X, this is bigger than my PS4 Pro, it's bigger than my original PlayStation 4. It is a big boy. Um, here's the console here. And yeah, it looks exactly like what I would expect in the pictures. It's a really cool looking console. It's different for sure. Um, it's definitely doesn't have that same kind of simple utilitarian look that the Series X does. No one is going to mistake this for a subwoofer. That's for sure. I think it's pretty obvious that this is a game console. Um, it's pretty cool though. Like it's, it's almost... I don't know why, but it reminds me of like an Xbox 360 and its kind of design and presentation. It looks very mid 2000s. That's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but it's definitely it's not a simple, plain design like what Xbox is going with. They definitely want to show that hey, this is a video game console. This is a PlayStation 5, and there is no mistaking this for anything else. I will tell you that right now. Um, looking at the console itself. It's pretty, pretty cool, like I said, it's pretty big. Um, it's got kind of this weird, kind of tapered, almost popped collar look to it. Um, almost reminds me of like, like, like an Alienware tower, um, like PC tower, that kind of thing. Um, it's got this big gloss black strap going around the whole front of the console. That will look bad really quickly. I can tell you that right now. You're going to get fingerprints and stuff all over that, and that is going to get really dirty looking, but that's okay. We'll keep it clean. Um, it's got a nice kind of matte white outer shell to it. There's interesting, actually, there's a... It's hard to see. There's a Sony logo on the inside here. It's actually texturized. Um, it's got a kind of a smooth finish on the outside. The inside is texturized. I'm curious as to if that's an actual reasoning behind that or if it's just easier when they manufactured it just to smooth out the one side versus the other. But it, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's kind of interesting that they did that. Um, venting all the way through the front of the console, you can see all these exhaust vents. Microsoft with the Series X has all the vents on top. Um, Sony's going a bit of a different route and they're running all around the side, down the front there. Um, and it, it looks cool. It's a little bit different. Um, yeah, it's definitely a bit of a different look. It's definitely a, a different type of presentation than what Microsoft was going for with the Series X, but it's not a bad look. It's just different. Um, and I think we'll see over the next couple of years how it truly stands up to the test of time in terms of how it holds up in terms of looks. But I don't think it looks bad. I definitely think it looks... Um, the design is, is definitely different, though. It looks like something that could have been designed in the mid-2000s, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, so just overall, looking at the front of the console, USB port, we have the power and eject buttons here. This, I believe, is for um, some form of external or a, uh, yeah, so that's a port, I believe, for either a hub or external storage. I have the disk drive here, obviously the Discless console would not have that. Uh, we'll look at the side. PlayStation logo up top. I mean, you can see how, it, like I said, it has that weird kind of tapered look to, this, to the console there. Um, other side, pretty much the same thing. It's just kind of a little bit bulbous because the disk drive goes in and then it kind of tapers out, smooths out on the other side. We'll flip this around. We'll look at the back of the console. Same thing, actually. So the one thing is... Um, same thing that they did with the Series X. There's only two USB ports. Um, it is what it is. It would be nice to have seen the full four USB ports. Obviously, there's going to be room for... Obviously, you're going to be able to use some form of USB hub. 
Um, but it, I'm not gonna lie, it is a little disappointing just to see the three ports, but it is what it is. Um, we'll make do with a hub if we have to. Got more vents along the back. You can see them all going down around here. Um, pretty smooth design overall. Like it looks good the way that they've kind of uh, angled them downwards and they, they thinned them. Um, yeah, not a, not a bad look. So back of the console again, USB ports, the ethernet cable, HDMI, and then power. So it's super basic, just like the Series X. Um, doesn't look like they're doing any of the uh, extra HDMI in-outs like they did with the Series X and uh, the PlayStation 4, so that you could, say, run your TV through it, do that kind of thing. Um, it looks like they're just going straight for the game consoles this time, um, none of that extra stuff, which it is what it is. I never took advantage of any of those features anyways, and I, I don't think most people did, so it's no real big loss there. But yeah, so pretty straightforward overall. A couple of USB ports, Ethernet, HDMI, power up. Um, yeah, that's kind of the PS5 in a, kind of an overall view. A couple different ways um, that you can mount this bad boy. I believe that most people, so you can either mount it... I could be completely wrong in how I'm doing this. I believe most people, you can either mount it flat like that. I don't believe... I could be wrong, it's either... Maybe it's like that. Maybe that's the look that I'm going for. Um, however, I have the stand. We are going to stand it up and we're going to mount it like that. So, yeah, that's kind of my overall bad unboxing of the PlayStation 5. Overall, I'm really looking forward to uh, giving this guy a test later on today. I'm going to get it set up, go through that whole process. Um, and then I picked up a copy of Demon Souls. And I'm going to be playing an Astro's play, Playroom on here. So um, we'll give both of those guys a go, see how it, how it works out. Hopefully I get to try that, really get a good sense of how the, the DualShock, or sorry, the DualSense um, makes use of all of the different haptic feedback features and all that kind of stuff. But overall, I'm impressed with the design. Um, if I were to compare it to the Series X, I would say that Definitely more of a kind of out there console. Um, Sony really wanted it to be unmistakable for what it is. They wanted everybody to know that, hey, you're buying a PS5, not just like a subwoofer or a PC, which the Series X definitely has that kind of appeal to it. But yeah, overall, um, I'm pretty impressed with the PlayStation 5. I am a really big fan of the weight and the feel of the DualSense controller. It's got a nice, definitely a little bit more of an upscale feel comparing it to the DualShock 4. Um, and hopefully today I get to put this thing through, through its paces a little bit and get a good feel for it. But overall, really impressed. I like the weight. Um, I'm looking forward to giving this guy a try. So thank you for joining me for another bad unboxing. Hopefully I get to do more of these. I'll be posting some more content in the future. Probably not any more bad unboxing videos for a little bit because I just spent a ton of money um, and did a bad unboxing of two really expensive consoles. So there won't be any big consoles or anything like that coming out for a while. I will definitely try and update with some more content. Probably won't get to see any solid streaming footage or anything coming from the TV because I don't really have any capture um, stuff to do any capture stuff. I don't have any com ugh, products to do any capture stuff. Whatever. It's a bad unboxing. You don't care. Um, but there'll definitely be some more content from the channel, so I look forward to posting more stuff. Hopefully everybody enjoyed this bad unboxing, or if you didn't enjoy it, well, I'm glad at least that you watched it. So, thanks a lot. I'll have some more content coming soon. Catch you later.